I think your personal style as a filmmaker in pie chart form is mostly made up of the sappy stuff like craft and skill and experience and all that warm and fuzzy stuff. But there is a couple of pie slices left over, which are mostly taken up by lens choice and sound design, with the tiny sliver at the end being occupied by your choice in camera. If you walked up to most DPs and asked them what their latest project was shot on, chances are they're going to tell you about what series of lenses they chose and not the camera body, which I think is important to keep in mind. This obnoxiously well-built case contains my favorite set of cinema lenses. You can probably guess by the waspy yellow that they are indeed the Vespid Primes by DZO Film. They're only a few years old, but well-established in the field, and there are a whopping 10 focal lengths available for purchase. 16, 21, 25, 35, 40, 50, 75, 90, 100, and 125. Each Vespid is designed to be similar in size and weight, and all of the gearing is level, so if you're running a follow focus and you need to switch lenses, you don't have to move your follow focus up and down your rail. Most of them open up to T2.1, which is plenty bright in most cases, with the 16mm opening to 2.8. All of the filter threads are the same, love that, and all of them come in PL, but can be swapped for EF if you want. Swapping the lens mount is actually really easy and not nearly as scary as you might think. The real question is, are cinema lenses worth investing in if there are so many photographic lenses available right now? There's a couple reasons why I think they are. Number one are the advantages in design. Gearing is machined into the lens so you can add a follow focus if you need to. Cinema lenses usually give more attention to reducing focus breathing. They have actual iris rings so you can change your iris smoothly with precision whenever you need to. Sizing is similar, weight is similar, threading is similar, light transmission is similar, and there's consistency in the entire lineup which takes me to number two. There's usually a set, and usually that whole set is color matched with similar character. If you stay within the bounds of a single set of cinema lenses, your frames will feel cohesive, even if you swap focal lengths, and it's nice to have different choices for different use cases. Number three is the most important, and also the hardest to define, and that's character. Let's start with a trick that I have. Whenever I watch a movie or a show, I always pull up IMDB and I scroll down to the technical details of that movie or show, and nine times out of 10, it will tell you the set of lenses used in production, which is useful because now you aren't just watching a movie, but a two hour long lens demo. Start to learn the characteristics of lenses and start to cultivate your palette. Sometimes a production may call for pristine modern perfection and sometimes painterly vintage warmth. You should always pick the right lenses for the job, but after a while you'll develop a personal preference. Certain things about certain images will inspire you more than others. You then can take your palette, find a set of cinema lenses that fit the closest, and Bob's your uncle. Just for fun, I thought I'd talk through my personal palette. I like an image to be slightly soft, especially wide open, no ghosting or smearing, but slightly soft, with maybe a little bit of extra sharpness as the lens is stopped down. Halation is fine as long as it's well controlled and not distracting. I like my flares to be pretty expressive. I don't often wish there were less flaring. Bonus points for warm colors like amber or a deep red like the Leica R's or the Vespid Retros. I don't love vignetting, but I absolutely love an aggressive focus fall off towards the edges of the frame. I think chromatic aberration can be pretty ugly, especially when it's a nuclear magenta or green color. I like my bokeh to be perfectly smooth in the middle with a well-defined edge. Some filmmakers call this soap bubble bokeh. Bonus points for the edges being more defined on one side more than the others. I like when the focus falls off smoothly from sharp to deep out of focus. I think that adds depth to the frame and 3D pop. Last but not least, I prefer the painterly look over the smooth look of out of focus portions. Ideally, my dream lens is fast, but it doesn't have to rip a hole in the fabric of the universe. T2 or T2.8 is fine. Oh yeah, and hopefully it doesn't cost that much. You should spend a little bit of time defining what makes a pleasing look in a lens for you. Maybe you don't mind chromatic aberration and you want a whole bunch of character, but you also like a lot of sharpness. Go pick up some contact Zeiss or Zeiss Classics. Maybe you like a lens to be blindingly fast and you don't mind paying for it with ghosting or softness. Try a Voigtland or Nocton. Maybe chromatic aberration is the bane of your existence. Do the SLR Magic APO Micro Primes or maybe a Voigtland or APO Lanthar. Sometimes you may have to mod a vintage or photographic lens. Maybe even rehouse it if you have the money. But lucky for me, the Vespid Primes fit the bill pretty closely with a perfect form factor. The image is well detailed, but nowhere near the razor blade sharpness of an Otis or a Sigma Art. I think skin looks better this way. Natural, but ever so slightly idealized. There's no ghosting or smearing or weirdness to worry about. Maybe the tiniest bit of halation wide open, which is perfectly fine. If I want it, I'll just add a black pro mist or a black satin. Flaring is pretty well controlled, which I think most prefer. I actually wish it was a little more expressive and wild, and maybe a little warmer. A lot of times flares show up as a deep green, which is sort of growing on me, actually. The vignetting isn't distracting at all, and there is a tiny, tiny bit of field curvature wide open. Again, I wish there was more, but it's certainly fine. The lens is probably more versatile this way. 
Chromatic aberration is present, but in no way distracting, mostly presenting itself in a limey green and a rosy magenta. Stopping the lens down a stop or two completely eliminates it. Bokeh is exceptionally smooth and has a beautiful slight definition at the edge, and at the edge of the frame it even points towards the center of the frame, which is just how I like it. Focus fall off is nice and smooth, and the bokeh is indeed fairly painterly. It can be kind of a drag to find a look that you're drawn to, and then you find out it's a rare set of vintage lenses that are hard to find, expensive to collect, and unwieldy to use in the field. The Vespids are built for film work, and using them is a joy. One weird thing I see filmmakers do is feel apprehensive about a lens because they feel like they have to buy the entire lens set at one time. Just pick your favorite focal length, mine's 75mm, and try out that lens for a while. If you love it, slowly add the other focal lengths, but only if you need them. Don't buy lenses because you just want to buy a set. They shouldn't collect dust on your shelf. There's plenty of movies that are shot on only a few different focal lengths and some with only one focal length. Don't feel limited by a single lens. Let it challenge you instead. It's such a joy to grab a shot with a lens with character that you love. And when you watch it back, it looks exactly the way that you want it to. I feel that way when I shoot with the Vespid Primes. Tell me your favorite series of lenses below. I really want to hear them. This is my favorite topic within filmmaking. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys and I'll see you next time.